This video was brought to you by Aviation Station, my second channel. Follow there for more videos like this, news and trip reviews. There are a lot of insane aircraft designs that never saw the light of day, and many have asked how they compare to each other. So why not chuck them into the mix and size them up together? Welcome to a very special video, the 100th video on this channel, and I hope you enjoy everything found and explained. We begin our tale with the smallest aircraft, the Bell X-22. A helicopter plane designed from the 90s, it had four ducted fans, could carry eight and fly vertically. But the military saw a better use for the design. Under heavy fire, this VTOL aircraft could have changed Navy operations, marine deployment, and through civil application, the way we commute around the world. Its ability to fly compact design and stable flight dubbed it the perfect blend of helicopter and plane. The next on their list is the Convair submersible seaplane, which does exactly what it sounds like it does. It has the ability to sink below the waves and hunt its prey. Submarines. That's right, this three engine little plane that looks like it's from Tintin can take out nuclear armed submarines. And it was seen as a simple solution to, to mutually assured destruction. The XB-35 and YB-49. Originally a World War II bomber concept, this flying wing aircraft would do away with the flaws of modern planes, such as long fuselage and perhaps still more advanced than many of today's plane designs. The original XB-35 could carry 20 machine guns and 52,000 pounds of explosives, and the later jet-powered version, the YB-49, would have been a contender against the B-36. Next we have the Yak-38. The Yak-38 was an experimental Russian VTOL fighter jet design that would later influence the current Lockheed fighter jets still in use by the US Air Force. Expect a video on this little plane very soon. While technically not a plane, it was an aircraft on rails. The rail plane developed in Scotland would have brought high-speed railway travel to the world decades before its development elsewhere. Using twin propellers, one on each end, it glided softly above the ground and had ambition plans to reach as far as London, France, and Egypt. The CL-346 was shockingly the idea to make a VTOL fighter jet as early back as in the 1950s. It could fly up to Mach 2.2 and deliver nuclear weapons, as well as land vertically in any environment. While many viewers might know of the SR-71 Blackbird, few know about its rival secret project, the Convair Kingfish, a spy plane that could fly at Mach 3.2 at over 90,000 feet. It was 73 feet long and had a wingspan of 60 feet and could fly faster and higher than the Blackbird, beat anything that the Russians threw at it and could even be used to deploy supersonic nuclear weapons. Perhaps the most controversial aircraft design on this list is the Avro Arrow. This was about to enter full production in Canada before being cancelled by the Canadian government. It has been remarked as the most superior bomber interceptor of its time, but with a price to match. From the creators of the A-10 Warthog comes the Fairchild Dornier. Seating 55 to 100 passengers, this German regional jet was the Airbus A220 of the 90s and was wider than the Embraer designs of the time. It could fit in more and fly further and was a contender to rival Boeing and Airbus. It was betrayed by its buyer and scrapped two days before its first flight. Next up, we have the SR-72. Currently under development as a replacement for the SR-71, this aircraft will change the way America spies throughout the world. It can apparently fly further and faster than the original spy jet, and most of its details have to be hush-hush. In the 1950s, the Iron Curtain East Germany developed an aircraft concept that was superior to Soviet designs, and it had such an impact that the West was even considering ordering a few. If it had gone ahead, it would have been a political triumph of the USSR and cemented the East German aviation industry for decades to come. 
Speaking of other commercial aviation designs is the Hawker Sidley HS141. This VTOL commercial plane could take off vertically and carry 100 passengers throughout Europe. It would have not only changed aircraft design, but radically changed how we design airports as well. Flying at Mach 6 above the world with donut shaped rings, this spy plane only has the name Aurora and uses a new type of engine that doesn't yet exist or what the CIA would have you to believe. Many have witnessed it, and to this day we don't know for sure if it's real. Ah, the Seamaster, a nuclear bomber that could land at any ocean and was the Navy's answer to the B-52. It was created to bridge the gap between covert operations and nuclear detonations until it was realized that missiles from submarines could do that role much better. The proposed Flying Dorito, or the TR-3B Black Manta, is a top secret project that apparently doesn't exist and has been flying using anti-gravity technology. We only have rumors, but if such a plane did actually exist, you can bet that everyone would want to know all about it. What happens when you combine a missile and a submarine, you get the Convair nuclear powered and nuclear delivering ramjet. This plane, if you can even call it that, had the ability to fly past the sand barrier and then return back below the waves to hide out until the next attack. Dubbed the Mini 747, this plane had a top cabin for the flight crew and then a flexible lower cabin that could hold 87 passengers. It would have been a game changer for regional aviation and we can see that its cargo flexibility would have made it very interesting indeed. Using radical new engine technology, this Boeing design would change the Japanese market, and then the world. And it almost got built, with prototypes flying and marketing wooing airline customers. Stick around because this technology would also come back in a big way later in this video. The MC-21 is Russian's answer to the Boeing 737. This aircraft will soon be upon us and give Western plane makers pause for thought. Its technology is a little bit more traditional, but perfect for Central Asian, African or other nations looking to cash in to super cheap air travel. And hey, don't forget to subscribe so far if you're enjoying this type of video. The Boeing 797 was designed as a middle of the market aircraft to take on Airbus and be the replacement of the Boeing 757. But Boeing pulled the design in 2019 after the 737 MAX crisis. With six giant rotors, this Russian helicopter would have become the biggest helicopter ever designed. It was created to lift SAM missiles to remote parts of the forest to help shoot down American spy planes, and would actually go on to be a proposed platform as a heli carrier for the Yak-38. The forgotten Japanese 787-3 and the Airbus A350-800 were smaller equivalents of their current flagship designs that were created for high density markets. The 787-3 turned into the Dash 9 version of the Dreamliner and the A350-800 would later become the A330neo. The Boeing 2707 was their version of the Concorde. It could carry 277 passengers and could fly further and faster than its European equivalent. But its technology was beyond the pocketbook of the United States and it was scrapped before it ever reached prototype phase. The second choice in the supersonic arms race was the Lockheed L-2000, a supersonic jet that was cheaper to build but not as technologically superior. Had it been built, likely America could have actually gotten this one to the market rather than the vaporware Boeing 2707. The Convair Model 37 was a design for a double-decker propeller plane near the end of World War II. Only a single military prototype was used during the Korean War, but engineers had long fantasized about a civil plane with its own two decks. I like to think that even though this project never went ahead, these same engineers would someday see the Airbus A380. 
The Boeing Sonic Cruiser was ushered in in 2001 and was able to fly faster than conventional aircraft of the time. Seen as a opposite move to the Airbus A380 in the market, going faster rather than carrying more passengers, this plane would eventually evolve into the 787, losing its speed advantage but maintaining its more fuel efficient ethos. Now this project is one of the most scariest ever designs I've seen. A 747 that could not only carry one ICBM nuke inside of its fuselage, but six, and then launch them from the air whilst in flight. This terrible weapon of war was thankfully never developed, but credit is where credit is due as it shows off the power of the 747 platform. Speaking of power, we also need to consider the 747-500 prop fan version. A brief flirtation around the same time as the 7J7 was bringing the prop fan technology to the 747 design. It could fly further than most and was designed for flights between Sydney and London direct. Not to be caught out in the double-decker phase race, McDonnell Douglas designed their own double-decker A380 called the MD-12 just before the merger with Boeing. Its huge design was ahead of its time, but it would have gone the same way as the A380 and was a folly when the market was increasingly focused on smaller jets. Perhaps the MD-12 was a deck too far for McDonnell Douglas. The Boeing 747X Double Decker was Boeing's version of the A380, and it could carry nearly a thousand passengers. This plane would have extended the hump of the 747 to the rear of the aircraft. The future of large cargo transportation is in question with the retirement of the 747 and only a single AN-225 in service. The world looks to Airbus and Boeing for potential large cargo designs for civil and military use. And this is what the hypercargo concept model is, a six-engined, powerful plane for transporting the world's largest freight. Based off the Vicaria bomber, the Draco concept is a passenger plane that could allow for faster flights and incredible journey times, perhaps one day changing what we think of a plane when we see it. And while technically not a plane, the Icarus rocket design could deliver hundreds of marines anywhere in the world at a moment's notice. A real-life halo drop pod, if you would. The American Akrana plan was developed as part of a strategic nuclear weapon platform able to move over water quickly to remote locations before launching its nuclear payload. This plane would have been able to strike fast and brought terror to the enemy who couldn't find them rising above the waves. Before the A380, Lockheed came up with the idea for a large, fat design of a plane that would be the perfect large capacity aircraft for long haul flights. It had double decks and was so large that it would require the entire might of Lockheed, Boeing and Airbus to come together to build it, but it would be capable of carrying well over a thousand passengers. Airbus wasn't quite done with the Airbus A380 and had several different plans to build a cargo version, a stretch of up to a thousand passengers, and a more economical version. Had the series sold more, who knows where it could have actually gone. And believe it or not, there was also a plan to turn the C5 Galaxy into a passenger plane, and passengers would have been able to take their cars with them as cargo. Alas, we will only ever know the military version of this aircraft. A huge triple deck monster plane, this concept was designed to see how many passengers we could fit on board a conventional aircraft. The answer, you will need to actually watch the video to find out. It had three levels of seating and six engines and would be used on routes such as New York to London. Speaking of New York to London, it was also realized that at cruise speed, planes would waste fuel. Why not drag them instead with a nuclear powered tug plane? The Lockheed nuclear tug had a range of applications and only technology at the time limited its concept. 
part of the plan to build 80 solar power plants in orbit, the Star Raker was a space plane that could do weekly trips into outer space. It was huge and had a carrying capacity to boot, and could have ushered in a new age of space exploration. A slight footnote here that NASA also designed a shuttle bus that could carry up to 70 to 80 astronauts on board to work on board these giant space stations. Not to be left out in the cold, Russia also came up with its own supermassive flying concept, the TU-404 Flying Wing. It could carry thousands of passengers and had movie theaters, galleries and restaurants and more. It was a flying monster plane and seriously, go check out the video. Speaking of flying monsters, the Boeing Pelican was a design to solve the cargo problem and allow armies to be transported across oceans in a matter of hours, not months. It was so big that it could carry an entire army battalion at once and completely dwarfed many other aircraft on this list. In the 1970s when the oil was cheap and in high demand, Boeing came up with the idea of a flying oil tanker to reach deep within Alaska and bring back the fruits of its labours. This colossal plane floated with a hydrogen fuel tank and would have had the second biggest wingspan ever designed. But none of these planes hold a candle for what comes next. Ah yes, the biggest plane never built. You knew that this would be the top of the list, and I thank you for waiting for it. The CL-1201 was a flying aircraft carrier built in the mind of a world where the entire US military could be projected at once. There was an Air Force version with jets under the wings, and an Army version that could carry more troops than you can count. There might have also been a stealth version built, but perhaps that's a story for a future video. Very special thanks to all of my Patreons who have come together to help support the channel and put this video that you're watching here together today. If you want to become a Patreon, you can jump onto the Patreon and see videos early, recommend new topics to do, and see quick access to all of my future projects. And speaking of other projects, jump onto Aviation Station to get the latest aviation news, industry insight, and plenty of other fun topics in the world of aviation. Thanks so much for watching and thanks so much for celebrating a hundred videos on the Found and Explained channel. Thanks again for watching.